Envision a world illuminated by gas lamps, where the marvels of the era are steam engines and electricity, is an enigmatic force still in its experimental stages. The year is 1860, and the race to harness this novel energy has just begun. Amidst this era of discovery, a young Italian physicist, Antonio Passanani, unveils a dynamo that could have transformed electricity generation. In this session, we will delve into Passanani's major invention, a solution to the pressing challenges of his time, yet an innovation that slipped into obscurity despite its potential. What led to the oversight of such a pivotal breakthrough? We shall investigate. In 1860, electricity was more a scientific curiosity than a practical tool. Steam powered the Industrial Revolution, while electrical machines were clunky, inefficient, and inconsistent. Inventors struggled to find ways to generate a stable, reliable flow of electricity. Most early machines produced surges and drops in power, rendering them unreliable for any practical use. Enter Antonio Passanani, a 25-year-old from Pisa, Italy. In a small workshop filled with coils of wire, soft iron, and basic tools, Passanati worked obsessively on a new idea. Unlike his contemporaries, who used straight line or rudimentary designs, Passanati proposed something different, a ring armature. This was a continuous loop of wire wound around a soft iron ring. His innovation allowed for a much smoother and more stable generation of electricity, which was critical for making electrical power usable. What was revolutionary about Passanati's design was not just that it was an efficient dynamo, but that it could also function in reverse, acting as an electric motor. This concept of reversibility, where the same machine could generate electricity or convert it back into mechanical energy, was unheard of at the time. In 1864, Passanotti published his findings in the scientific journal Nuovo Cimento. It should have been a landmark moment for electrical engineering, but instead, it was almost entirely overlooked. Why? At the time, electricity was not well understood, and the real-world applications of Passanotti's dynamo seemed distant. In fact, Passanotti himself once remarked to a friend, Perhaps I have only made a toy. It was an ironic understatement, one that would come back to haunt him when his invention was later rediscovered by others. This overlooked paper sat largely unread for years, a hidden gem in the world of scientific literature, while Passanotti quietly continued his academic career. By the 1870s, the world was finally beginning to realize the importance of electrical power. That's when inventors like Werner von Siemens and Zeno Graham started building their own dynamos. One day, Passanotti happened to attend an international exhibition where he witnessed Graham's dynamo in action. To his surprise, it was strikingly similar to the one he had invented over a decade earlier, using the same ring armature concept. Antonio Passanotti had previously embarked on a journey across Europe to purchase scientific equipment on behalf of the Ministry of the Navy. During his travels, he visited Paris, where he met with Dimelin, the director of the Fremont Workshops. Passanotti hoped to persuade Dimelin to purchase the rights to manufacture his invention, the dynamo capable of converting mechanical energy into electrical energy that consisted in a groundbreaking discovery at the time. However, it was Zeno Fafil Graham, a Belgian who worked as a chief mechanic at the workshops, who showed great interest in the workings of Passanotti's machine. Passanotti had showed and explained to him the details of his invention, and Graham, understanding the potential of Passanotti's design, patented his own version of a dynamo in 1869, which bore remarkable similarities to Passanotti's original invention. By 1871, Graham had begun the industrial production of this. Graham Dynamo, marking the first practical use of the device on a large scale. Passanotti, feeling that his priority as the inventor had been overlooked, protested vigorously. 
He sent a letter to the Academy of Sciences in Paris, seeking recognition for his work. Unfortunately, despite his efforts, Passanotti was unable to secure official acknowledgement for the priority of his invention, and Graham continued to be credited with the commercial success of the dynamo. Although his dynamo was not commercially adopted in his time, the technical advancements Passanotti introduced were crucial. The use of the ring armature solved a fundamental issue. Electrical machines of the time produced inconsistent, choppy currents. Passanotti's design created a smoother, continuous electrical output, which laid the foundation for the development of reliable, large-scale power generation. Furthermore, the reversibility of his machine, the ability to both generate and convert energy, paved the way for modern electric motors. Today, that same principle is used in everything from household appliances to industrial machinery and even electric vehicles. To fully appreciate the significance of Passanotti's invention, it helps to understand the mindset of the time. In the 1860s, the general public, and even many scientists, viewed electricity with a mix of wonder and skepticism. While public demonstrations of electrical experiments were popular, no one could yet envision its practical uses. Electricity was seen as a force for entertainment and spectacle, not for lighting homes or powering factories. As a result, practical inventions, like Passanotti's Dynamo, struggled to gain attention. There simply wasn't a market for electrical machines, and without a clear use case, even the most innovative ideas could easily be overlooked. So why should we remember Passanotti today? Because his invention didn't just solve a technical problem, it created a foundation for the electrical revolution that followed. His ring armature design is the direct ancestor of today's electric generators and motors. Whether powering a small fan or the massive turbines and power plants, modern machines still rely on the same principles Passanotti discovered. And yet, history can be cruel. While the names of Edison, Siemens, and Tesla are remembered for their contributions to electricity, Passanotti's name is faded. But without his quiet genius, the electrical world might look very different today. The story of Antonio Passanotti's dynamo is a reminder that even the most brilliant inventions can slip through the cracks if they arrive before their time. Sometimes, the world just isn't ready to appreciate a breakthrough, or the right opportunities don't materialize. In Passanotti's case, it was a combination of both. His invention was ahead of its time, and he lacked the ambition to promote it. Nonetheless, Passanotti's work remains a cornerstone of modern electrical engineering, even if his name is often forgotten. The dynamo he designed may not have changed the world in 1860, but its influence is still felt in the machines that power our daily lives. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed learning about this forgotten innovation, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment. What other lost technologies would you like to hear about next?